In God We Trust is found in many places across the United States and the world. It's been on U.S. currency since 1864. It's now found on all Federal Reserve notes and U.S. coins. It's in the United States House of Representatives, front and center, overseeing everything else below the clock, above the flag. In 1956, it was signed into law as the United States national motto by President and Corporate Chief Executive Officer Dwight D. Eisenhower. The common interpretation of In God We Trust is that the people have faith in a Christian God. The state of Florida adopted the phrase as its state motto. The state of Tennessee even went so far as to recently require the phrase in all its K-12 schools. But this interpretation is not the legal meaning of the phrase, as legalese is literally a different language with its own dictionary. To interpret the phrase properly, we must legally dissect the meaning of the words, in God we trust. God's right-hand man on earth is the Pope, at the Vatican, as the corporate administrator of the Holy See. Pope Pius X said the Pope represents Jesus Christ himself. Recent Pope John Paul II wrote, Have no fear when people call me the Vicar of Christ, when they say to me Holy Father or Your Holiness or use titles similar to these, which seems even inimical to the Gospel. So God in the phrase, in God we trust, refers to and translates into the Vatican. The Sustake Trust, according to law, refers to an estate. Title 28, United States Code, Section 3002, Number 10, the term person includes a trust or an estate, making the term trust and estate interchangeable under the umbrella term person. Estates are essentially for dead people. To be exact, trust is the national trust estate by and through the United Nations which represents the body of citizens, we the people. We is not the people commonly assumed. It is the body of international legal personality artificial persons that represent each human being collected together as corporate person franchises called UN Nationals issued from the United Nations for management. Each UN National is insured as debt through underwriting by the IMF, US Treasury, Federal Reserve System. The new insurance debt money is placed into the National Trust Estate by the United Nations for we the people, dead people, lost at the sea of international commerce at the statutory age of seven. So trust in the phrase in God we trust refers to and translates into estate. In common vernacular, this means in God we trust best translates into in the Vatican we estate, the meaning of which is that we receive our legal presence slavery identity conveyed in estate through death by the Vatican managed by the United Nations. All national trust estates appear to be authorized by the Vatican, especially since the creation of the United Nations. The United States is a founding belligerent member of the UN. The Vatican was given modern sovereign city-state status by the Lateran Treaty in 1929 condoning Mussolini's fascism. The symbol of fascism is the fascia, a bundle of sticks wrapped with an axe. The founder of fascism, Benito Mussolini, claims fascism should more appropriately be called corporatism because it is the merger of state and corporate power. In Mussolini's time, the state took over the corporations. In our time, the corporations have taken over the state. Global governments are a corporate franchise vendor system of vendors. Major governmental functions such as citizen surveillance are outsourced because the government cannot do such things, but the corporate contractors do not have such restrictions. Here is House of Representative Alan West explicitly explaining the corporate nature of the United States. Well, you're absolutely right, Judge. You know, what we have to look at is the president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. Look at it. The president is the chief executive officer of this corporation called the United States of America. Look the phrase, in the Vatican we estate, hangs in and above the U.S. House of Representatives. It is an expression of who owns the United States Municipal Government Corporation. Beneath the phrase, in God we trust, is the non-military U.S. flag flanked on both sides by the fascia of fascism, or in clearer terms, corporatism. Anyone elected in the United States serves the Vatican, regardless of party. Democrats, Republicans, and even the Green Party and Independents are corporatized parties supporting corporatism in a de facto corporation merely pretending to be a government. A legal fiction entirely made up in the mind of man. The United States Corporation is doing the business of the United Nations One World Government on behalf of the Vatican. In God We Trust is an ode to the corporate fascism of the United Nations and the Vatican. In other words, the United States is entirely taken over by the UN, and it's been this way since 1945. The people being represented by the national estate of the UN member state under the Vatican via the United Nations is a very important concept to grasp. According to the United Nations, the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government under the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 21.3. Will is not the free will that most assume it to be. 
When death knocks on our door and we exit from this plane, the question is if the deceased legal will is with a United Nations member nation. The will of the deceased is the basis of authority of government according to the United Nations. Treating human beings as corporate estates makes sense if we are already legally dead, with wills, at their governmental corporation. According to the UN, each human being is an enemy combatant lost at sea and declared deceased at the statutory age of seven to claim our power of attorney over us. Even people without wills are assumed to give authority via their undeclared will when claiming to be legal citizens of any given United Nations member state. In God We Trust is a statement of earning a dying rather than earning a living. It is a statement of living in a Vatican-defined dead hologram they call hell. Look around, did you not see it? If we choose to identify with and as their legal presence that they impose upon us, we are taking up the mantle of slavery, willingly, knowingly, or even unknowingly. Ignorance is no excuse, they say, which is why our ignorance can be used against us by our own governments. The greatest fiction of law is that the United States exists. It does not. The United States has been taken over as a franchise and wing of the United Nations government. The Vatican ultimately controls all money supply in every government through the UN, IMF, and World Bank, as seen on every Federal Reserve note inscribed as, In God We Trust. In the Vatican We Estate. The United Nations has expanded its global government power so much that it has even taken over all of New York City as the fourth sovereign city-state next to the Vatican, City of London, and Washington, D.C. The UN New York City banks are even immune from US laws for being an international UN New York City jurisdiction rather than being US based. Click here for more info on New York City, the fourth sovereign city state of the United Nations. For truths that attorneys, clergy, and government won't tell you, like, subscribe, notify, and share.